Mr. Beast is known for three main things. Being rich, being the most famous YouTuber, and giving away a ton of cars, money, houses, islands, anything you could possibly think of. So many people have benefited from his giveaways, whether it be financial support or even medical, like his curing the blind video. All of that is great, but unfortunately, if things go in a certain direction, it could be a huge problem for his brand and his philanthropic work. Let's go back, shall we? Extremely wealthy individuals have been doing philanthropic work for years, and unfortunately, it often comes with the dark side. Carnegie, Rockefeller, and many, many, many others in the 19th century are notorious for being known as these very wealthy people doing huge philanthropic projects. These notable figures give away an immense portion of their wealth, but they also had horrible company processes and mistreated workers. A major reason as to how they actually accumulated that wealth is because they often mistreated workers, did unethical business practices, and established monopolies, and a whole bunch of things. Just not great. We still see it. But Dan, Mr. Beast hasn't done nearly anything as wrong as Carnegie or Rockefeller. This is almost certainly true. At least as far as we know, Mr. Beast has never done anything nearly as bad. But he might not be the savior that YouTube thinks he is. He certainly has been criticized by employees and former employees of certain work practices and work environments that aren't necessarily great. We're used to seeing a great, splendid, incredible thing and product on YouTube, but it doesn't always actually turn out that way. This is of course a very small sample size, and it is a 3.7, and that's not to say that, you know, he's horrendous, but let's take a look at what some people have to say. Some people say the whole thing needs to be shut down because there's horrible management and Mr. Beast is even a misogynist, super intense workloads, a lack of understanding, a lack of privacy, the worst place I've ever worked, horrible HR department. I mean, we could keep going, but you know. It does have to be said though that all of these comments about Mr. Beast and his business are one of many and that there's tons of opinions out there and plenty of people who have loved working for him. So in case you can't tell, my entire point of this video is just to give both sides. His use of ghost kitchens has certainly come under a lot of fire, mainly because for those who don't know, ghost kitchens can have poor regulations and it's kind of like free labor. From a business standpoint, it's awesome, and it's clear to see why he did that, but the result is unfortunately a lot of shit quality food and taking advantage of people, even if he doesn't necessarily mean to. So, Squid Games is another one that certainly wasn't great, alright? So, I didn't get this at first, but it kinda has turned me. Beyond the obvious differences, like brutal deaths and organ harvesting, Mr. Beast's version of Squid Games represents literally the exact same problem, using underprivileged people for entertainment. You could also probably say that about his regular videos too, but we'll get to that. This money actually means something to these people, and something about recreating a competition like this that's meant to represent how the wealthy use the poor isn't exactly the best look. At the end of the day, this is a business, and while I truly don't believe that Mr. Beast only does these good things for money, he has amassed an incredible amount of wealth doing them, and a ton of positive notoriety for his good deeds. Mr. Beast himself is seen as YouTube's poster boy, the golden content creator who can do no wrong. And in my opinion, he has a right to be known for that. But he also should be seen as someone feeding into the capitalist machine, and someone who has greatly benefited from performative charity. What's important to note is that this is nuanced. In order to help more people, Mr. Beast does need more money. And in order to get more money, he uses the less fortunate for content, which does help them. And the cycle continues. It's a bit wishy-washy and kind of gray. An important question that has to be asked, and the reason I'm making this video, is what actually matters more to him at this point? I don't know. <laughs> Mr. Beast makes content for a very general audience. And what does a very general audience like to see? Less fortunate people receiving things that improve their life. It's a slam dunk. I mean, who doesn't smile when they see a homeless person get $10,000 or a single mother get a home? Like it or not, his contributions are for content and for money and doing the right thing by helping people. I feel a bit ambiguous about that and ultimately people are being helped. So brings me to my next point, which is an ethical and moral question. There are two, probably a jillion more, schools of thinking in terms of how you judge things and actions and the morality of them. Utilitarianism says that the means don't necessarily matter, 
because the result is good. Yes, Mr. Beast may be using these people for content and his own self-growth, but ultimately he's still improving their life by giving them things. So that's what makes it good. On the other hand, deontology is the complete opposite, essentially prioritizing the intentions behind an action more than the actual result. Although he's doing good things, he very well might not be doing them out of the kindness of his heart. Rather, he simply wants to use these good acts for the less fortunate for his own personal gain. This isn't to say that Mr. Beast is a bad guy, because I truly don't believe he is. I think the debate people have regarding his style of YouTube and charity work is much more nuanced than people think. Ultimately, the system shouldn't rely on wealthy people like Mr. Beast to help out the less fortunate. The system should help them. Taxes could lower the wealth gap and redistribute money to those who need better housing, food, and community resources, but that's a whole different topic. Although heavily debated and obviously a grey area, that's not actually my main problem with Mr. Beast. My problem comes with the corporations that use him. For example, on his Team C's program meant to clean up the ocean, it was in part sponsored by Coca-Cola, which is literally the world's biggest plastic polluter. And yes, short term, this is great. And you know, he's cleaning up the oceans, although it's really not doing that much if you actually look at it. Uh, but still, you know, good thing. Long term though, this might not directly be shouted out by Mr. Beast, but you know damn well Coca-Cola is going to use Team C's and we did this for their own personal gain. And unfortunately Mr. Beast is used by these corporations to satisfy their PR and marketing. Another example is Genio, the company that donated a bunch of turkeys to Mr. Beast to give out for Thanksgiving. Mr. Beast gave away these turkeys and helped tons of families in need but it was funded by a company that has had horrible instances of workplace mistreatments, bad conditions, and a system that consistently takes advantage of farmers. I mean, why is Genio gonna run a TV ad when they can get a YouTuber to promote them and it's gonna be seen and appreciated by millions of more eyeballs? I just fear he's getting used. Maybe this is seen as nitpicking, and you could think Mr. Beast is a terrible person for how he's built his brand, or a great person. Deontology versus utilitarianism but promoting companies that are extremely problematic definitely isn't going to help people in the long run. These companies gain so much more promotion via Mr. Beast compared to what they give away. So this promotion just fuels a company and adds to their revenue in which they do more shitty things. This leads to funding mega powerful corporations that do extremely questionable things. Ultimately, Mr. Beast is a bit of a gray area. Yes, I was critical of him, but I genuinely believe he's a good guy and the things he does do improve people's lives. I suppose the point of this video is to actually take a deeper look into the people that we look up to on the internet, research what you donate to, and just don't be a mindless zombie on the internet. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. If you liked the video, make sure to subscribe, like the video, comment, like the video, and also like the video. Okay, I also want to shout out these YouTube channels here. Uh, because they very much inspired me to make this one and uh, they gave me a whole different perspective than the one I was actually going to make originally. As you'll probably see, mine were heavily inspired by all of those, but uh, I did want to add in my own little twist with the ethical stuff because it really is an interesting topic and no matter how you feel about it, people are being helped, so it's, you know, it's interesting. And Mr. Beast has a f ton of drama going on right now, so it's never ending, I guess. Um, so yeah, alright, love you, bye. Mr. Beast! Mr. Beast!